call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mayor Rankin? Here. Vice Mayor Smith? Here. Councilmember Celaya? Here. Councilmember Hawkins? Here. Councilmember Montano is not able to make it. Councilmember Walter? Here. Councilmember Woolridge? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Would you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Charles. Public hearing and presentations. Item A, public hearing on a proposed alternative expenditure limitation home rule option. This will be the first reading of resolution number 1434-14, a resolution of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, proposing an extension to the alternative expenditure limitation. Mr. Farina will give you a presentation. Mike. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this upcoming fiscal year, 2014-2015, is the final year the town can operate under the alternative expenditure limitation home rule option for budget purposes and the town must seek voter approval to continue uh, to use the alternative limitation for the 2015-16 budget fiscal year. Uh, tonight is the first of two required re public hearings that must be held in preparation for a fall primary election that will ask voters if the town council can continue to use the alternative expenditure limitation as a part of the budget process. The second public hearing and council vote to hold the election will be next Monday, April 21st. By way of a quick background, in 1980, voters approved an amendment to the state's constitution that established a system of expenditure limitations for all counties, community college districts, and local governments. Uh, this, the amendment established uh, 1979 and 1980 as the base year for town expenditures and 1978 as the base year popul population. The amount of expenditures can grow from year to year above the base levels is controlled by population growth and inflation. The amendment allows jurisdictions to seek voter approval to use an alternative limitation instead of the state imposed limitation. Growing communities like Florence often have service levels that outpace what the state imposed limitation would allow. Therefore, since the inception of the state limitation in 1980, the Florence Town Council has sought voter approval and was allowed to use the alternative limitation home rule option to determine the annual budget. As an example, the state imposed limitation for fiscal year 2013-14 budget would have been approximately $17.2 million. The budget adopted included about $42.3 million that would have been subject to the state imposed limitation. Therefore, under the state imposed limitation, about $25.1 million of services would not have been allowed. The estimated state imposed limitation plus applicable constitutional exclusions is $20,851,671 for fiscal year 2516. We estimate that expenditures under the alternative limitation will be about $37,885,000. 37,885,000. With that, staff recommends opening the first public hearing on the proposed alternative expenditure limitation home rule option. Any members of council have any questions for Mike? No. Hearing none, I'll open the public hearing on our expenditure limitation. Anyone in the audience like to come forward and speak at the podium, please? Any? Mike, what, uh, how much w would we be losing this next year coming up or not be able to budget, not losing? 2014-15 is the final year, so w this current budget um, or for next year's budget, we wouldn't lose anything because we won't be under the state imposed limitation. However, the following year, 2015 and 16, um, should council not go to the voters or the voters not uh, approve the question, uh, it's estimated that we would lose about uh, $17 million, $18 million, 17 to $18 million. Charles, with that in mind, what would we have to do to get down to that budget figure? Mayor and Council, I think at, at that point in time, if the voters did not uh, 
move forward and approve uh, the home rule option. I think that we, the staff would have to bring back to you all in council a number of options to reduce services or to streamline a number of things we're trying to do as we move forward. This is also impair our ability to continue to grow and move the community forward in the next few years. And more than likely that would cause layoffs within the, within the town government. That is absolutely highly possible, sir. Any other questions? Yeah, I totally agree with what you say, Charles. The only question, I'd make one thing clear, and you mentioned it. However, we don't lose the money collected. We just can't spend it. Correct? That's correct. We're limited on the expenditure level. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comment? Hearing none, I'll close the call or the public hearing. Item 5, New Business, Resolution Number 1435-14, Discussion of approval, Disapproval of a Resolution of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, establishing a polling place for the May 20, 2014 special election, setting the time of the polls will be open, and appointing election officials. Mayor and members of council, this is a statutory requirement that 20 days prior to the election that we do have our poll workers in place, and we do know where our poll is being taken. As, as council is aware, the town of Florence will hold one polling site. It will be at the town of Florence town hall in this room. Our polls will open from 6 p.m. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. I'm sorry, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. And we have um, named elected officials that will be serving as clerk, judge, inspectors, and we've also named early boards and a marshal. Um, if someone by chance does not come, we've also given authorization within this resolution that the county may select an alternative in their place so that we can move forward with this election. At this time, I would recommend that the council does adopt resolution number 1435-14. Any, any questions for Lisa? Need a motion? Second. We have a motion and second to adopt resolution 1435-14. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Item B, discussion approval of disapproval of a special event liquor at license application from the Greater Florence Chamber of Conference for applications for May 1st and June 5th for after hour mixers. Um, Mayor and Madam, uh, Mayor and members of council, uh, the reason why you have this on the special agenda tonight is because there would not be enough time to get it for the liquor license uh, for the April 21st meeting for that May 1st meeting. So we went ahead since we were holding a special meeting, we pushed this forward for you so we can get it in plenty of time for the liquor license and board to process those applications. <coughs> Staff is recommending approval of the, of the applications so that the chamber can continue to hold their first Thursday's events. And remember, first Thursday for the community, it's an event that's held from 4.30 to 6.30 at the McFarland Park. Everyone is invited and encouraged to attend. Anyone have any questions for Lisa? Hearing none, I need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the Greater Florence Chamber of Commerce special event license application. Second. We have a, recommendation, a, recomm a, a motion to approve the recommendation of the Arizona Department of Liquor License to Control for the Florence, uh, Greater Florence Chamber of Commerce application for special liquor, event liquor license. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item six will be the work session on the 2014-2015 budget documents. Uh, Mr. Montoya will take care of that. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Town Council. Uh, this will be the first uh, time we discuss the 2014-15 uh, recommended budget. Uh, we do have a meeting that has been set for the 23rd of April to go ahead and spend a little bit more time going through these documents. In your possession, you should have a three ring binder that is the content of where the draft document is at this time. Um, preliminary, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Mr. Farina here in a moment to kind of let you all know kind of where we're at at this point in time as far as 
through the 2013-14 fiscal year as far as revenue expenditures and how we're doing. After that, I will go ahead and move forward and talk a little bit about the budget that is being presented to you at this time. And um, so I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Farina at this time. Good evening again, Mayor and Council. Um, let me... Take that away from me. <laughs> okay. Um, just to let you know, as, as we develop the budget, one of the, one of the things that we do when we're preparing the budget is uh, determine revenues and how we're doing uh, with revenues in the current year and then be able to project those revenues into the next fiscal year's budget planning to determine the level of expenditures that will uh, be able to work with the, with the budgeted expenditures. Um, so just what we, what we have here is a few slides that go back to the f second quarter or mid-year report that was presented to town council uh, a month or so ago. And just so you know that, you know, when I, when I reported that uh, back then, you know, the town's revenues were doing uh, really well compared to projections and we were exceeding projections in a lot of areas. And um, just to... Re remind you of that and I've just got a few slides here to go over with the revenues and expenditures. On the revenue side, uh, total sales tax, we were uh, exceeding expenditures, I mean exceeding the budget and uh, the forecast was to exceed the sales tax projections for the uh, current year of about 600,000. Um, looking at sales tax in a more detailed perspective, the sales tax is comes in from four, for four different areas, general, uh, private construction, government construction, and food. And you can see in all of those areas, the sales tax was exceeding expectations, other, except for the government construction was, was down a little bit. State shared revenue, uh, same picture, pro projected variance of uh, about $14,000, so in, that case, in this case we were meeting expectations as of mid-year. State shared income tax, that's a number that we get from the state at the beginning of every year, and that, that number is going to be right on every year. There's no uh, difference uh, between projected numbers and the budget. The vehicle license tax uh, currently favoring, uh, trending favorably. Projected variance is uh, about $61,000. Uh, general fund as a whole, which includes the sales tax component, the state shared revenues and other like building permit fees and other uh, charges for services for the various uh, departments. General fund is projected to uh, exceed the budget by 620000 And then this slide here is just a breakdown of the general fund revenue by taxes, licenses and permits, franchise fees, et cetera. Uh, midway through the year, 50% was collected and we're about, the general fund was about 3% 3, 3 ahead of the prior year. On the expenditure side, there's a, there's a couple Mike, of... Mike, go back to that last slide. Under the franchise fees... Yes. If we were to, if the public was to vote in favor of the, uh, the purchase Johnson Utilities, would the 5% franchise fee that we currently get debt to the budget very, very bad? Or how much are we getting on that 5%? That is not in this budget. That's in the water okay. budget. Um, I don't have that calculation on me, so I can certainly report back to council on that. I could be interested to see. I, we should all see that. You understand what I was talking about? Yeah, but I, I'm thinking that if, if, we, if we are reducing that 5% for the people in the Anthem area, we're also recapturing the for the people that live in Santan, if that goes through. There won't be any franchise fee out there. Uh, but there'd probably be something that would make up for that. Charles? Uh, since there is not a city in the Santan area, there would not be a franchise fee. 
Um, we would have to do, as I've talked to, to you all, the council, mayor, and vice mayor before, it's going to take us about 18 months before we do a full complete study to make sure we do impact fees through the entire area. And to make that determination under state law, we have to do that study. So if there are other charges that, that would occur, that would come before you all to make that determination. The 5% uh, is going to be very minimal. It's probably going to be about $50,000 in the water fund. Um, that's yet to be determined, but it's only going to affect the Anthem area. Um, in the next few years, if that were to occur, there would be other savings that would happen because we don't need two finance areas, two billing areas, two IT areas, but there would be savings in the system somewhere. I was just curious how it was going to affect the water wastewater budget, I guess. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Charles? Okay. Uh, so this slide here and the next slide are general fund expenditures. Just looking at the general fund expenditures in different ways. You can look at it by function. Uh, you can also look at it by type. And then on the following page is by department. And in each of those cases, you can see that uh, we're at 46% through midway through the year, so 50% away through the year. And uh, right now they're 19% ahead of the prior year, however, uh, clearly within budget and what, what was expected for the current year. And with that, I'd just like to say that going into this, you know, the, the, we're, the um, budget was projected conservatively on the revenue side and on the expenditure side, and, and um, we're well within budget. And uh, with that, I will turn it over to Charles. Mr. Montoya. Keep, keep that there for a minute because it might be easier for us both. Um, first of all, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, um, over the last two, three months, um, all your department heads, myself, have been going through the entire budget that has been approved by council, the 2013-14 budget. As you may recall, when I came in about a year and a half ago, there was a number of changes that occurred. We tried to change the way the budget was being done so it was more um, transparent, not only to you all, but to the community as a whole. Um, this budget is building upon that. These department heads have been empowered to look at their budget, to make changes, to remove items that are one-time expenditures, and to put them in another fund and work with the financier to do that. I wanted to make sure that this budget only contained those items that were recurring items, that weren't items that were just in case or if something happened. These are things that are normal operating budget. So the first part of this, I wanted to go through what accomplishments we have, been made, we have been making at this point in time. And if you look there on your screen, we're still working forward on the annexations. We're making a lot of progress. We did have to start a little bit over again a few months ago, but we're making a lot of progress on that. Ms. Garcia has done a phenomenal job with Mr. Eckhoff, and they've made a lot of progress, and we should be having an update to you all here in the next, next 45 days or so. Um, the before and after school program. We've always had it here in the core, but it was important to make sure we did this in Anthem as well, to make sure that we have services for the entire community, not just segments of the community. The Bruin Camp building should be done this week or next week. It should be all done. The money that you all have set aside to restore that historic building is about completed. Um, we will be having an open house. I've talked to Ms. Garcia about this, uh, Ms. Evans about this. They'll be having an open house so that you all and the community could see what has been accomplished. Financial report in the council, the fire department safer grant, if you recall, three additional firefighters. We were the first town, city in the state of Arizona to receive that grant. Um, the firefighter secure, social security issues, that has been an issue for the town for th at least the last three years. That has been resolved. We've worked with our firefighters. We've resolved that issue. Fire marshal responsibilities have been transferred from the state to the town. Um, the fire chief has been working with his battalion chief to make sure that we go ahead and move forward in the community and make sure these things are occurring and those inspections are happening. Fire station number two was opened a few months ago. Lawrence Heights overlay. There's been a lot of issues with this road because of ADOT doing their construction on 287 and uh, 79 and then 79 and 79B. 
this road has taken a lot of beatings because of, because of the semis that have taken that road instead of going down Butte or wherever else. This will start happening in the next few weeks. You know, our public works director has ensured me that we are going to make sure that this happens. It will be a temporary fix until these things, until those roadways are completely fixed. But this will happen. The high school house has been sold. That, that those monies have been put in a separate fund for a council to go ahead and use those funds in the future to do any sort of assistance for homeowners in the future for our grants to match those grants. Home tour was a success. Everywhere I've talked to people, anybody that's come to me has said that this is probably one of the best we've had in a number of years. Main Street, we've done phase one and two. We've got a little bit of ways to go. We have uh, the next program is working with ADOT and uh, SHPO to get those street lights and those things done. That's not going to be done until next year. It's a long process working with them. Wish it would go faster, but it's not going to happen. The last part is one of those recommendations you'll see later in the budget in that when you go down Main Street, you see a lot of pieces of the street cut up in pieces down the middle, piece here, piece there. We need to make sure it's uniform to make sure it flows well. And Mr. Costa is in the process of identifying what is, what is that going to take to make it happen. Uh, Plant Road has been paved. The police department has been remodeled. If you go over there and look at their conference room, you look at what they've done, it is an entire change from about a year ago from at this time. Sanitation ordinance came, from, came forward to you all. You all made those changes. And I will say that we still have a little work to do. We really do. It's a work in progress. The Silver King building, Padilla Park, you all have moved forward with making this happen. The contractor has, uh, is on, you know, is on board at this point in time and moving forward. This should be done by late July, or early August. The street sweeper, most of you all, council, vice mayor, mayor, don't know about this. Um, this is our first year in MAG, Maricopa Association of Governments. Our fees, I believe, this year were about $8,000. We applied for a street sweeper, which we definitely needed because of uh, our streets, because of the dust. We just got awarded $175,000 on Friday, first year in MAG. And all we have to pay for it is matching about $10,000. That was a good decision on your all part. Uh, the utility department is fully staffed. They've done a considerable amount of changes this year in repairing piping, wells. They're moving forward. And this is only a portion of the list of things that have been accomplished this year. But I wanted you all to see what your staff, your department has have done. They've done a phenomenal job. Next. Last year... At this time, you may recall, I was only here a few months, and looking at the budget, my, my commitment to you all was that in the 2012-2013 budget, budgeting fund balance of approximately $1.4 million, I thought, okay, I know where the economic cycle was. I know what you all had to go through. But my goal was to make sure that went down to zero. Last year, the budget that we brought to you all, that we recommended to council, consisted of 865,000 of fund balance. This year, at last time at this year, I said, okay, in year two, I'm going to bring forward a budget of 450,000 of use of fund balance. Government Finance Officers Association, their best practices recommends zero, unless it, you are in a bad economic cycle or emergency operations, they recommend zero. So what are we doing? What are we doing? What have we done? 2013-14, the 865 is what we recommended to you all. What are we going to end up? We're going to end up about $448,000 in the positive. That means you all, your department heads, have saved approximately $1.3 million in this year's budget to make sure we use none of that. Not a cent. This budget before you all, last year I said we'd do about $450,000 in fund balance use. We're coming in about $412,000. That's where we're at now. 
I believe that we will be well under that at this time next year. And the following year, we will get to zero. We will do our best to do that. So how did we achieve this? Last year, you may recall, we had no new vehicles, no replacement of vehicles, because we needed to have a category or an understanding of where those vehicles were at, where they were assigned, how old they were, were what are the mileage on them, what's the wear and tear, what's the maintenance. And until we had that information, there was no reason to ask you all, council, mayor, for new vehicles or replacements. So we did not. This year, we've evaluated those. We've recognized, and you'll see later, that this budget, the recommended budget that we're bringing to you all, asks for four new vehicles. We're setting aside half a million dollars for four new vehicles, and the remainder of that is for replacement. Those replacement vehicles will come back to you for approval. That is what should happen. You all need to know what's happening. So we've reduced training and other miscellaneous costs throughout the entire budget. These department heads have been empowered to make sure they go through their budget and identify what they need and what they don't need. We've looked at our contracts. We've looked at our services. We've reduced them. Mr. Farina has gone through the budget. If they had a line item that they underspent last year, then it went to, the line, then it went to that cost that they underspent. If they didn't spend what they had, it goes back to that. They did not get the same amount unless they could justify it or they can show why they needed it. We moved all one-time costs out of this budget. There's no what-ifs or just-in-cases. They're out of this budget. The town manager's office, by, by my, either by myself or by Ms. Garcia or Mr. Knudsen, reviews every contract and everything that goes through this office. Excuse me. So, next. Where are we at? Our fund balance, you know, the recommendation for GFOA is at least two months. And I've never been comfortable in doing that, whether it's been here or in any of my previous jobs. And I've been doing this 25 years. What are we recommending at this point in time? 50%. Why? Because I think it's the right thing to do. Maybe we should do another month or two in the near future. We never know what the economic cycle is going to be, but I think what you all as a council has done over the last few years has been exceptional. This budget includes no new property tax increases whatsoever, period. We are at 1.11 mills, and my goal in the next year or two, committing to you all, is to get down to at least $1. This economic cycle, we're coming out of it. And once these annexations are complete, if they're successful, that's where we should be. It's highly possible, and I don't see why we can't do it. The requests that came from your departments were about $1.4 million. We are recommending just under 600000 for positions. Vehicle requests came in at $1.25 million. We we're saying we're going to recommend setting aside half a million dollars. Out of that half a million dollars, four new vehicles. The rest of that will come back to you all for replacement of vehicles because I know we need replacement, but we need to make the determination of what needs to be replaced first. If we were to have recommended this all to you, we would be in deficit about 1.4, 1.5 million. And in good conscience, we could not do that to you all. It's not right. How did we build this budget? We are trying to develop and establish a base level of services for the community. At the same time, we're trying to enhance the quality of life to the community, whether it be through parks and recreation, whether it be for police or fire services, public works, our streets, our roads. That's where we're at. So, where are we at? Last year, these are the goals we brought to you all. Continue to provide exceptional public safety and community services. Expand the tax base through annexations and economic development outreach. I think we've been working on those two fairly straightforward. 
securing the town's long-term water program for the future generation and growth. That is before you all in the next few months. Revitalize the downtown corridor through beautification and business investment. We've done a few projects in the downtown area for streets and road. We're working on the park for Padilla Park and the Silver King building. We're making strategic investments in the planning for the continued growth of Florence. The last one is kind of new in a way. Improve the quality of life and create an equal or complementary service level base for all residents of Florence and create a new services for younger children and active adults. I want to make sure that us as staff, me as your town manager, whether it be in Anthem, whether it be in the core, whether it be down south, that there is a base level of services that every child, active adult, teenager can have. If, if they have it in Anthem, that they don't have it down here, it's going to create issues in the future. So what we're trying to bring to you is to make sure that we do our best to make sure that does not happen. The base budget recommendation that we're bringing to you all. The uh, positions that are currently in the budget, we're still recommending a 4% maximum merit increase. We are bringing forth to you a new benefit plan that we are recommending to you all. In that, in that plan, there is no increase for the town, no increase for the employees. What this changes is the plan that we're on. It's not going to be an HSA anymore. It's going to be a fully funded PPO plan with no increase to anybody, the town or the employees. They will have general co-pays for prescriptions, general co-pays for doctor's appointments, they can do a voluntary FSA if they would like. That is up to them. But this is going back to what the town had a number of years ago. The same thing. We are fortunate that the employees of this town have been smart and wise in the way they use their health care. So our uses have been seen by the health care companies, and we've got a phenomenal, phenomenal rate, zero. So in your base budget, the booklet that you have in front of you, we've limited the recurring items to only basic increases in cost for supplies, service increase, utilities, training that is necessary to keep their certification. That's it. The added positions in the budget, we're going to break down. We'll show you that in a moment. But they're to add for service delivery and the quality of life development and improvement. There are no one-time capital or single purchase items in this base budget. I wanted to make this easy for you all. Your department has wanted to make it easy for the general public to see what was going on with their government. <coughs> Everything else in the general fund budgets, if it was not justified or does not have data behind it, Mr. Farina pulled it out. That simple. Revenues are very conservative. They're based on trends, inflation. It's based on the League of Cities. It's based on town's estimate and growth projections. I've done this for 25 years. And then you have a finance director who has a CPA who's done this for another 25 years. We've never blown a budget. budget I've never have, and I'm not going to allow that to ever happen here. What does that all mean? This budget is structurally balanced. That's what we are presenting to you all. Moving forward. Going to go through real quick new positions in the base budget, go through a little bit of the benefits, transfers, capital projects, expansions of services to the community, and increase the quality of life. These are the positions that are new to the budget and only new to the budget that are in the base budget at this point in time. In the police department, we're asking for an additional sergeant position. The structures needed to separate a lot of the personnel to assist the chief in managing his structure moving forward. At this point in time, sure, he can use more patrol people, but right now he needs more supervisors to manage those people. Second, 
a school resource officer or, and crime prevention specialist. There needs to be a connection for an officer in our elementary schools, in our high school. This was always the case for years. This was always funded by the federal government through FEMA, not anymore. But I think that connection is important. Community development. You know, we had close to 200 permits last year. We're going to reach that at this point this year. Customer service is huge. They need help. These customer service people, these administrative assistants, everybody that gets hired, I have talked to Lisa, they all know. They go through Ms. Garcia, you know, Mr. Barber, they will get hired, they will get screened appropriately, whether it's their knowledge base or their customer service techniques, and those people will be recommended to those department heads to hire. We need to have a base level of customer service throughout the town, and we need to do a better job. Parks and Recreation. With Padilla Park coming online, with Heritage Park, with the Little League Park, with where we're going, we need help in park maintenance. We've done a good job, but now we're moving forward. We need to get these things fixed, attract the, errors, the, the state softball tournaments, little league tournaments, bring them down here. We need to make our parks at a higher level from where they're at. We've done a great job, but we need to step it up a little bit. Special event coordinator for parks and recreation. <coughs> Our events, once we have them, when the 4th of July comes along, we should be planning two weeks later. We don't need to be waiting for two months before. If we're trying to attract people in Pinal County, in the Valley, in the region, we need to do a better job at planning and coordination. And with Mr. Brian Hughes here, he's done this up north. I think we can be successful here and bring these, bring people to the town of Florence. Public Works, last year we created the Fleet Department. We've done a lot of basic oil changes and those type of easy fixes, but we need an auto mechanic. Wayne Costa needs that. This is all, those three, those three positions that I have highlighted there in yellow will pay for themselves. They know that, it'll happen. Information Technology, our website, as many communications that we're having with the general public, we need to do a better job of reaching out to these individuals, these people in our community, and these people outside the community that want to move here, that want to be here, that want to know what's going on here, which means we need to do a better job of presenting ourselves. I've talked to, to Mr. Farina, you know, Mr. Bennington knows this, Ms. Garcia, we've got to do a better job, and I know we can. Fire and police. We have a brand new fire station number two up north. What we're asking for is an administrative position to staff that station up north, responsible to Ms. Garcia and her office to do uh, imaging and office filing and, and scanning up there, but also because now we're doing all the fire marshal duties for the state, this person needs to type up the reports and handle that. They also need to work with Chief Hughes to make it simple for people in the Anthem area or up north to file police reports or complaints without coming, ha have to come down all the way here. They can do it up north. And that person will be reporting to Ms. Garcia. Going back to the town employee benefit recommendation, initially when we started the budget, we set aside approximately 8% for plan increases, for participant changes, all these type of things. Don't need any of that. What we're looking at is a recommendation to, to have a fully funded PPO with co-pays of prescriptions, doctor's appointments, lower deductibles for the employees. Yes, there's no more HSA. The HSA that the people currently have, our employees currently have, they can keep. They can keep all their funds. If they want to add funds to it, there's an FSA to add funds to it. We're not taking anything away from it. We're giving them a higher benefit level at no cost. And what we have done, though, is we've set aside 4%, approximately $50,000, because we anticipate that there will be employees that see where we're at and will move their, 
themselves or their families to the town's benefit plan. Um, just to clarify, the town is moving forward. We're not no longer going to have the HSA, and the employees that currently have funds available can continue to use those for appropriate purposes. But being that we no longer have the high deductible plan, the tax benefit won't be there for them to continue to utilize the HSA in that way. They'll have a health. They'll have a different. Uh, FSA, federal an savings FSA account. instead of an HSA that they will be able to contribute to. So I just wanted to make sure you understood they will keep the benefit of having the money that's currently in and they will be able to use it for their their health costs and, and related. Next. Um, what have we transferred around in the budget? We have si set aside half a billion dollars. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Town Council, you all may recall we came to you with the study approximately August of September of last year that said for the first year that the annexation succeeded, it'd be approximately 750000 Half a million dollars in staffing costs, about a quarter million dollars in projects that need to occur in the first year. Well, if these annexations are successful, Staff will be bringing these to you all for consideration around July, August. If that occurs, it will only be for three quarters of the year. So it's not $750,000 that we need to set aside. It is half a million. That will be up to you. And if they fail, then that half a million goes back wherever you all want it to go. It goes nowhere. Next, as I said before, we set aside half a million dollars for new vehicles and replacement. At this point in time, we are recommending four new vehicle purchases, two new police cars, one new water tanker truck that is necessary for public works, and one new fleet vehicle. That is it. The rest of that money out of that half a million dollars will be set aside and prioritized when myself and all the department heads get together and decide on what vehicles need to be replaced. My concern here has always been is I drive a 2005 Ford truck. 220,000 miles. If we have a 2006 vehicle here that has 80,000 miles and outlived its life five years, why do we need to replace it? If the maintenance is not that expensive, I don't believe we need to, and that's why we need to look at it. And until we look at that and bring you a list of those vehicles that need to be replaced, we will sit back here and wait, and we'll bring it back to you all for approval. Small one-time purchases, there are miscellaneous one-time purchases that need to occur, whether they're for turnouts, the new fire equipment that needs to happen for the fire department because it's required, there's a wear and tear on those items, those type of things. $100,000 have been set aside. Transfers to capital projects, these are road projects, these are miscellaneous other things and we've broken those down for you all. Transfers to potential municipal building, as we've talked before and as staff will be bringing forward to you, in early May, we have uh, vendor proposals that will be coming back to you all regarding the library, regarding a rec center and uh, an aquatic center out here. That money's been set aside. That money is restricted. It can only be used because of food tax, because of impact fees. It can only be used for those purposes, nothing else. On the next screen, we've broken these down for you all. I wanted you all to see what's in this budget. We all want you to be, it, to be transparent to you all and the public, to see what we are planning, what we are recommending to you all. The, the Pinal County Federal Credit Union, that's the 335 that we previously bought to you and $60,000 for tenant improvements. Main Street Extension, uh, working with Mr. Costas, we, Costa, we an, anticipate that this will be approximately half a million dollars, however, the unknown is working with SCID, the San Carlos Irrigation District. That we don't know. So uh, the water tower, the paint and lighting. Um, about five months ago, I approached the, uh, the corrections department for the state of Arizona and, and the, the private company, and they won't allow any of their inmates to get up on that water tower, so we need to hire somebody privately to go ahead and clean that up, paint that up, and make it, you know, the town of Florence. And 
that is who we are. We need to let everybody know who we are. Uh, the police station and fire station design modifications. What is that? Um, your police department and your fire department in the core here will tell you that, and I, I will say to you that uh, a police department that has one window is interesting. A fire department here in the core that doesn't have windows in their dorm rooms, you know, is, I have not seen that. Is that enough money set aside? No. But what that'll do is that'll tell us, do we need to make those changes or not? And maybe we do need to make a few windows. Maybe we do need to make a few modifications for dorm rooms because of growth that may be occurring. This will let us know. Miscellaneous furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Uh, working with Ms. Garcia and, and Mr. Farina and Mr. Knutson, you know, there are things, the furniture that the town has not bought, things that are breaking down. This pot is assigned specifically to Mr. Farina and Mrs. Garcia to make that determination for all the departments. This is not a pot for the department to say, I want this, I want that. I want this controlled. It's up to them to make that determination with their departments. Road repair and maintenance. For a long time, as you all know, the HERF funds have been pretty much taken from the cities and towns around Arizona. We don't have any. And we've waited for a long time. You look at First Street, you look at a lot of the streets in the town, we have potholes, we have issues. We really need to take care of those. Hopefully the legislature will put back the 30% they've committed to at this point in time. Don't know. But we really can't wait. Some of these roads really need to be fixed. And Mr. Costa, talking to him, he's committed to make sure this happens. My, under my understanding that's five, uh, half a million dollars to be coming out of general fund going into these roads. It's been set aside. It's one-time funds, funds that aren't needed, that are not recurring. Yes, sir. Thank you. This and that'll supplement the HERF funds we do get in. Yes, sir. The Silver King electrical wiring. We talked about this a few weeks ago. There's a number of issues with this, with the remodel going on with Padilla Park, with the lighting in Ball Field 3 at Heritage Park. Uh, there's issues doing individual wiring in the suites in the Silver King because of the conduit or electrical wiring, the throughput that APS has available to us. So we've got to wait. This is for that. IT replacement. You'll see in this budget document that every department is asking for a laptop or asking for some sort of, you know, IT computer. Well. This is going to be set aside for that. It may not be enough for everybody, and I know it's not, but we've got to make priorities. They've got to figure it out. They've got to work through Ms. Farina, Ms. Garcia, and each of the department heads. Fuel Depot. We've talked about this a number of times in the last five, six months, mentioned it to you in manager reports. The town currently pays approximately 45 to 50 cents more per gallon of gas than we need to pay. We are paying approximately 25 cents higher than the street price purchasing at Circle K or wherever else, and there's another 20 cents in state sales tax that we shouldn't be paying. If we have our own fuel depot, this will pay for itself within a few years, easily. And Ms. Garcia has already contacted the county, and if they come on board, it will not only save us money, it'll bring the town money to help pay this off quicker and put more money in the general fund. Do we have any idea of the location of this yet? Yes, sir. In working with Mr. Knutson, Ms. Garcia, and Mr. Uh, Costa, it will occur behind fire station number one over here. Um, Main Street overlay improvement. Uh, as I said earlier, Mr. Costa, we've talked about this off and on, you go down the downtown area, a lot of the crosswalks and the intersections that have been done, they're great. They need to stand out more. The other problem is a lot of the cement is in pieces. We need to figure out how to deal with that. That's up to him to figure out. We will bring you back a plan, but we want to make sure this is in the budget so that the main street is one complete piece and not multiple pieces. Curbs and sidewalks. We, in this year, we're going to start 
early this summer looking at sidewalks around Willow, Central, from Adamsville. But we also have sidewalks and curbs that we've got to deal with in Florence Gardens. And waiting for her funds or waiting to find other money, we've got to set money aside to make sure this happens. Business Assistance Center. And I'm going to turn this up to, over to Mrs. Evans. This money, um, I, I will say that we have, you may recall that council uh, decided to set, around, set aside $300,000 for the rehabilitation of the Bruin Camp building. Ultimately, this is almost complete and it will be done for just over $200,000. So we're, pro we're saving approximately $80,000. And this money, it, we're setting aside for a program that, that staff has discussed among ourselves and we're recommending to, to the mayor, vice mayor, and council uh, to move forward for the community. And I'm going to turn this over to Ms. Evans for a moment. The Business Assistance Center is a one-stop uh, information center for business recruitment, retention, and expansion here in Florence. And uh, working closely with other town departments, such as the Community Development Department, um, we can provide sort of one-stop shopping for prospective businesses who want to open up a location in Florence. And this Business Assistance Center can uh, help facilitate that process and, and act as sort of an ombudsman through the development process uh, with community development. Um, the center can also provide training, much needed training for our local businesses. Um, you know, times change very quickly in terms of technology and so forth, and it is important to stay up on the latest trends. And by using our partners uh, throughout the state, uh, we can bring specific specific training to our local business owners uh, in the Brunicamp building. And uh, we can also bring business counseling through the SBDC and SCORE uh, organizations, um, as well as working with uh, uh, some of our statewide organizations such as Local First Arizona. So there's some opportunities here uh, to provide real value to our business community. And there's also space in the Brunicamp building uh, in, on the second floor that could be used for small meeting space as well as co-working space where business professionals and entrepreneurs who may not have a storefront per se can uh, uh, lease space in a low cost way uh, to, to do their work uh, in that facility. So that's a basic overview of the Business Assistance Center. Part of it was also to make sure that you know, businesses that want to come into the town of Florence, that they have a place to go to seek help from community development, from the town manager's offices for business license, and know where to go to make it easier for them without having to go to five different places at once. This would make it a lot easier for them. Second, the Broom Camp building has been restored because you all decided to make sure that happened. But we also, at the same time, need to limit the amount of foot traffic through that building because it is still an older building. We can't have a high-impact business or high-impact service in that building. We've got to be very careful if we want that building to survive a long time. Um, so next. This is just an easy breakdown of all the other small capital items that are in the budget. Um, nothing in specific order things that just need to either be fixed in heritage parks, a number of things that happen to have to happen at the senior center, the Little League Park, Town Hall. There's nothing specific here. The money that we talked about earlier, the $100,000 to set aside for small stuff, the majority is coming out of there, here. It's not additional money, it's coming out of this pot. And that's what we're trying to do. What other recurring items have been added to the base budget? We have put in $40,000 for park and rec recreation events so that we can make larger and more town events, attract more people to the town of Florence, $25,000 for park maintenance, recreation and maintenance. We've got a lot of maintenance that needs to occur uh, in the Little League Park, in Heritage Park, uh, we're picking up Padilla Park. We have the um, South uh, Park that's getting fixed now with the um, uh, children's equipment and the small park that's there off of South Main Street. That's what that's for. Um, 
$20,000 of park recreation programming. As Mr. Brian Hughes starts bringing on additional programs, he's going to need people to help him, whether it be additional you know, help to do uh, training programs for, for young kids or teenagers. He's going to need that part-time salaries. He's going to need to figure out those programming. Um, $20,000 for the court clerk. Our uh, volume, our court docket, has doubled in the last year alone. Uh, if you come here on a Thursday, you will see how packed the parking lot is. And it is, the volume is considerably increased. Um, $25,000 for part-time maintenance to assist with bulk trash collection. Now, I, I will be the first, you know, the, the code changes that we made I think are great things. But I think we've got improvement on our own. You know, we've got things on the contract that we've got to change with RAD, but we also need to make sure that we do a better job of managing the bulk trash throughout the town. Plain and simple. Um, the last item, the, the Chamber of Commerce has requested approximately $10,000 uh, for an addendum in their contract to assist with some planning activities and with the town. This will be brought forth to the t through the council for approval. Ms. Garcia, you want to add something? Or? Go ahead. Sorry. Um, that $10,000 is both for an addendum for the current contract that will be taking place uh, next fiscal year and for the renegotiation of the following year. Um, the Chamber of Com Commerce's contract runs um, from January 1st to December 31st. The Town of Florence budget cycle runs from July 1 to uh, June 30th. So there's a six month um, there's a six month period to where we will be negotiating a contract and the cost will increase. Um, cost, I should say the cost could increase. The cost could increase with both in a possible addendum for this current fiscal year and contract negotiations right. for the following year's fiscal year. It's only six months of the fiscal year that will be included in that increase if the contract does increase. Right. One of the last few items I want to bring to Council is some of the, the plan and goals that we that myself as your town manager and us the, as department heads um, are looking to try and accomplish this next fiscal year. You all may have, have seen over the, over the last few months there's a lot of vicious animal attacks and things going on in the town. There are certain things the county does take care of and certain things they don't. Uh, Chief Hughes along with Mr. Minato and uh, our judge are working on an ordinance to bring forward to council to look at some of those whether it be loose animals or unchained animals or vicious animals or attacks to bring an ordinance to you all to discuss to see how you want to move forward with that. Um, annexations. This is, as we said, we've set aside half a million dollars. If this is successful and Council wants to move forward with it, we've set, set that there. Building code updates. Um, Mr. Eckhoff has been working through his, you know, contacts throughout the state we do believe that there are ways to uh, implement codes to assist with buildings that are older in the communities to make it easier, not just for commercial but for residential modifications. And we are working on that. Bulk trash pickup, as I said before, we've got a little work to do. Uh, community events uh, between uh, Mr. Hughes and myself and you know, the staff, there's a lot of things that we need to work on with special events to make them, you know, one of a time opportunity for people not just in Florence but to come throughout the state to come see where Florence is at and what we're doing. Community policing, school presence. We talked about the school resource officers, you know, crime prevention specialists, making contact with those kids throughout the community. Grant funding. There are a lot of grants out there, and while we have done a, a phenomenal job this last year, uh, we can do even more. We really can. Home rule election, earlier tonight, you moved forward with uh, having a home rule election. 
Um, we really need to make this happen, and, and staff's going to get behind this and make sure we do whatever we need to to make sure this occurs to inform the public. Library or Recreation Center or Aquatic Center. This is something that will be coming to you all in the next three weeks. We have vendors that will be submitting their proposals to us, I believe, the first week in May. The week after that, we will be bringing this to council for consideration to determine what amenities you all would like to see on the 40 acres next to Town Hall. Johnson Utilities Potential Acquisition. Whether we move forward or not, this is on our agenda to make sure if we do move forward, if the general public votes this to pass and town council makes this decision, this is something we will make sure is successful. Recreation enhancements, Mr. Hughes, myself, the staff wants to make sure whether it's children, it's active adults, if it's teenagers, we need to have something for all of them to do. We don't have a lot of activities for teenagers and kids to do in the community and we need to fix that. Regional public safety dispatch with other communities. Chief Hughes has been communicating with um, his counterparts in Eloy and Coolidge to do a regional dispatch potentially for the region. What does this mean for Florence? This means Florence would be receiving funding and expanding their ability to provide the service and it would save money for not just Florence but for Eloy and Coolidge doing a coordination of the dispatch services. There's a lot of work here to be done. Don't have all the answers, but this is something we're working on. Roads, streets, the preservation enhancements, we've got some work to do. And that's why we're asking you to, to let us move forward and try and fix some of these things that are happening that we know need to be improved upon. Sidewalk curbs, same thing. And last, the website, the overhaul, and to make sure that the entire community, what we are doing, whether financially, whether programmatic activities is very transparent to not just the mayor, the vice mayor and council, but to the community as a whole. So I'm going to turn this over to Ms. Farina for the next few slides so that he can kind of uh, talk about how to read the document, the three ring binder that's in front of you. Okay, Mayor and Council, so in the binder that you have, there is the proposed recommended budget, um, and it's pretty straightforward, I would say. I just wanted to highlight some of the, what you'll see in the document itself. Uh, each fund has a summary page, and it, that has the beginning fund balance, the summarized revenues, as well as the summarized expenditures, and then the ending fund, projected ending fund balance. Uh, there's the typical four column layout. In this case, there's an added column for, that shows the requested numbers, but a typical budget. You'll have the prior year actual, uh, the current year budget, current year projected numbers, and then the uh, recommended or adopted budget. And then the, the fourth column that you see is just the requested. That was requested uh, by departments and then the recommended budget. That's before you tonight. Also, I'd like to say that this budget, doc, it, it is a draft, it's a, it's a um, the final budget will look a little different, it'll have a nice cover and, and uh, it'll be laid out different, it'll have the highlights and accomplishments that you're used to seeing with uh, the budget document. This budget here, this document here is a line item detail, uh, so you can see all the line items within uh, the, the recommended budget. There's also uh, revenue pages and expenditure pages. I put up here f uh, for you to see uh, an example of an expenditure page. Uh, the expenditure page, again, shows all the same columns uh, with two more added columns that shows you the difference between the recommended budget and the projected 2013-14 budget. Uh, just so you could see the increases or changes, the, the significant increases or changes that occurred or the that are within this uh, recommended budget compared to the last, this 2013-14's uh, projected budget. Um, what's highlighted up in the two columns to the right are, it just shows the significant differences. And then down below you can see the significant variances explained on each expenditure page. Also you'll see some num uh, highlights in yellow throughout the document and those are just where the uh, rec recommended budget differed from the budget that was requested. 
Um, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Mr. Montoya. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> Mayor, Vice Mayor. This, the, the budget that's pre presented before you tonight is just a recommended budget from myself and from the department heads. Ultimately, this is the town budget, the budget that you all will determine that we move forward with or not for 1415. Um, if there is something that you all wish to add as a council, then I would ask you to let me know what, some, what we can remove from the budget. That way we stay structurally balanced. Um, also, if there is a line item that you all would like more clarification on, please let myself or Lisa or Mr. Farina know and we'll give you all the detail we can. This is your, ultimately going to be your budget and the budget that you're going to give to me to move forward with. And we want to make sure you are comfortable with this budget. Also, we do have the meeting on the 23rd um, that we will meet and talk a little bit about the budget or however in depth you want to get into it. But in the meantime, again, please, please contact myself or, or Ms. Garcia or Mr. Farina. We'll walk you through whatever document you want, whatever line item you want, give you all the information you can. But we are trying to be as transparent to not just you all, but to the community as a whole as to what this budget is and what we're aiming to try and accomplish this next fiscal year. And with that, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, I turn this over to you if you have any questions or concerns or issues. Does anyone have any questions or like to ask Charles Bill? Yeah, on the uh, <clears throat> community development, it says uh, you want an administrative assistant. Uh, paid for by increased development and permit fees. Well, that's one area that I've, I get complaints d daily on the, what we already charge. And if we raise those, we're really going to get people up in arms. Uh, the permits, and you know, and in, on parks and recreation, you're saying it's paid for by increased sales tax. And then on public works, pays for itself by fixing more maintenance items rather than multiple vendors, which I agree with that. That's fine. I've always figured we should do more in-house, but I don't know about the increased sales tax and the increasing our permit and development fees. And then I'm curious on the firemen's turnouts. They're only good for one year. Council Member Hawkins, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, if I may. Um, those two items, uh, Council Member Hawkins on the administrative assistant and the special uh, event coordinator, we're not saying we're going to increase any fees because in this budget there are no tax increases, no fee increases, nothing. What we are saying is we have so many additional permits and things happening in community development that it's going to pay for itself. We're not raising any fees, and I would not recommend to you or this council to do that. The same thing with park and recreation. If we do the events that I know we as a staff can do, it'll bring more people to the town, which will spend more money here, which means more sales tax. We are not recommending any fee increases whatsoever. Well, it's in yellow right below it. That's why I was wondering. I understand, sir. It looked like that's what your direction you were going. And then... Uh, like I say, on those turnouts, they're only good for one year. Um, let me turn that over to, to Chief Zick for a moment, but I believe there's a period of time how often they're used, depending it on how It says annually we... on the budget. Correct. L let me turn that over to Mr. Chief Hughes. Mr. Chief Mayor, Mayor of Council, they're, they're good for a term of five years. What we did in the fire department is we staggered um, each age of the turnout so we don't get hit with a huge uh, amount every five years to, to do that. We try to stagger them year by year so we only have a couple of pairs to buy every year. Okay, they are good for more than a year then. They're five yes, years. they are. They're okay. good for five years. That's the service life of the turnout. Because uh, I saw back in the other part it said annually and I was thinking, well, man, you know. The yeah, we, we will have turnouts that need to be replaced every year, but we won't have all of them to replace right. every year. Okay. One other thing. Well, never mind. That's, that's, that's all I have on the budget right now. Gary, you have anything? I do. Um, we also commissioned a salary study survey, if I'm not mistaken. 
Are we incorporating any of that, um, the findings into this year? In addition, are we addressing some of the issues that were previously identified with the plan we moved to approximately two years ago due to the compression and that scale that we talked about? We did um, request Mr. Barber to go out and look at that salary study. We have completed that salary study. Staff, senior staff, and the department heads have looked at that study. There are a number of items that we can make a recommendation on. Uh, at this point in time, we're still going to evaluate that. We cannot move all at once because of the cost that would be to the town as a whole. There are some things we can do, but when this budget is almost ready to be uh, adopted by council, we'll come forward with a number to make sure that we can actually do that without um, kind of um, increasing the use of fund balance in the budget. Valerie, do you have anything at this time? I do not have anything at this time. Tommy? Tom? I'm, I'm, I'm believing that the uh, traffic light at 79 and 1st is in this year's budget, therefore will not affect next year's budget. Is that correct? I'm sorry, sir, Vice Mayor. Traffic light on 79 or with McDonald's? Yes, sir. I believe Mr. Costa will say that we're only paying about a tenth of that cost, and he does pay the rest of that. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's in this budget, though, not the next budget. Yes, sir. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. I don't have anything at this time. Like what I saw, I, uh, I do like the zero budget to begin out with. Uh, I'm concerned about some of the projects not actually getting done. We want to make sure we get all these projects done this year. We've started a lot. We've got a lot more to go. But I think we're headed in the right direction, as long as we can make it where the citizens can afford it uh, and we don't have to raise any taxes to them. Any other questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, I'll close that portion and go call to the public. Anyone from the public have anything you'd like to say? Please come forward to the podium. Larry Colert, uh, Florence Gardens. A number of years ago, we started on a street project in Florence Gardens. It was multi-phased, and a few phases got finished, and it was great. Knuckle Brothers did a great job. Now it's stalled. It's been, I don't know, two or three years since anything has been done. I understand what the state did to us with the HERF funds. And how long are we going to hide behind that and not manage our way around the problem? We have to finish the streets. If you were looking for a home, you're retiring and you're looking for a home, and you're looking at Florence Gardens, and you found two homes, you like the homes, one's on one of the streets that got finished, and one is on a street like ours that didn't get finished, which one will you buy? We have to do it. There's a lot of money in this budget going a lot of places. $40,000 was planned this year for Florence Garden Street Project. It didn't happen. Where did it go? Now it's back in the budget for next year. Is it going to happen next year? And what can you do with $40,000? Not a whole hell of a lot. So what I'm telling you is, if we keep doing this, you're going to start getting a lot of heat from Florence Gardens. We pay taxes, too. We've been pretty quiet about it, because the streets that were finished, they did a terrific job. And Wayne is to be comp complimented for all the work he did. But we got to finish it. Thank you. Thank you. Ruth. Okay, we have three minutes. <coughs> Mayor, members of council, I'm Ruth Harrison, Florence, Arizona. I'm here to say that the uh, part time maintenance assistant uh, for bulk trash coordination is a great idea. And um, to bring to your attention again the email that I uh, sent out. You got a copy. 
about bulk trash that is appearing again all over town. Sofas in one place, um, big pile of carpeting in another, um, uh, big bags filled, garbage filled with big, ba uh, big garbage bags filled up, uh, weeds and litter in various places. And I'm hoping that some of this can be something can be done about this before your next um, budget comes into uh, into into place. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the sooner the better. And I know that the town manager has the uh, ability to do that according to the contract with RAD. Uh, he can just go ahead and, and um, instruct his staff to take care of that. So I'm hoping something like that will happen soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other member of the public have any comment? Hearing none, I'll close call the public. Call the council, Tommy. Sorry. Oh, nothing to Bill. Yes, uh, <clears throat> on the trolleys that were running this weekend, or well, for the last whatever it was, what was it, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Friday, Saturday? Anyway, to make a long story short, the pamphlet that we printed, I thought there was a chamber thing, so I wasn't really concerned when people came to me, but. I found out that the town paid for the trolleys and they paid for the brochure. And of, they have they listed uh, all the businesses in town, or I would say the vast majority. There's like uh, 52, yeah, 52 businesses. Yet they uh, failed to put in the windmill, one of the best known locations outside of Florence to the general public wasn't included and uh, the river bottom uh, grill was not included and they weren't even asked about it and it you know when we spend that kind of money I don't know what it was but I'm sure it wasn't cheap and I only noticed one I saw three people in one of the trolleys and I saw one person in another one and several of them just running back and forth empty. Uh, I didn't even know that we were doing that because I, we tried something similar some years back and it, nobody really used it. The people, they don't really come into town. They stay out there. I just thought, it, you know, whoever, you know it was, we dropped the ball on that big time. I think it, you know, we should have a little more uh, efficiency when it comes to promoting the town, and that's, I think, why we did that, was to promote the town. But when you leave out two of the bigger businesses in town, it's kind of shocking, but that's, that's, that's all I have to say about it. Tara? I just want to say thank you for your presentation this evening. It's a nice start to the budgetary process. We have some work ahead of us, and I'm looking forward to it. Tom? Yeah. Uh, we still have a bump on Main Street in Butte, and it's where the asphalt and the cement come together. Uh, we can get that ground down anymore or not, but that sure is a nice bump. So. That's one thing. The other thing is in Ariola Square, there are two of the older lights in Ariola Square. Square They haven't worked for about a year. Is there any chance we can look at those to see if they can be lit up again? Those are the main two things I've got, and uh, I would like to remind everybody, in case you want to go howl at the moon, tonight, around midnight, is an eclipse of the moon, full eclipse, and it'll also be the largest that the planet Mars will be to visual sight in the, for another six years. Thank you. And I got a couple of things I want to say. I think we had a very successful run with Country Thunder this year. Uh, a lot of people in town. I saw more people in town this year than I have in the years past. Uh, there, I saw more traffic. The restaurants seemed to be pretty well full, uh, even today as they were leaving town. Uh, so I think in Circle K, I know that they're they're kind of glad it's over because their employees got tired of lifting all those bags of ice. But uh, they went through a lot of ice this week. 
uh, out there. It's a, an event that, that brings us a lot of advertisement statewide. Uh, not only statewide now, we're going countrywide. We saw vehicles from out of state, Wyoming, uh, back in the Midwest, a lot of California cars. Uh, just, I thought we had a real good turnout at, at Countries Under. I didn't hear too many problems that went on out there, law enforcement or, or uh, medical-wise this year, which is a good thing. Another thing I'd like to remind the folks is that uh, Little League will be starting this month a little bit later. We are going to be using the Little League Park again down on uh, across from the Catholic Church. Uh, we need to work on traffic control during game times down there, Chief, uh, so that because that's one thing, we don't want any kid hit chasing a foul ball or getting away from their parents running across the street, so we need to take care of that. Don't have that much problem at Heritage Park with that. The other thing's a safety issue, uh, and I just want this to go out to remind people. Uh, we had an incident when we had to go to Kingman. We stayed in Laughlin at the Colorado Bell. My little granddaughter, and this is a safety issue that people should be concerned with when they go into strange rooms. My little five-year-old granddaughter opened up a telephone book like kids do and found a piece of tinfoil in there. And before we knew it, she had the black all over her face. All of us in law enforcement know what tinfoil cooked with a match or a lighter is. And the Colorado Bell really didn't even seem to really care about that they were more concerned on uh, getting the room clean, and then they didn't even do that. But when you go out and you go into a strange room, motel room or hotel room, make sure and just kind of check so your kids don't get into that. It was a very scary situation. I don't think she got any, if she'd been had it in her mouth, would it turn into a little bit of a different story, but we don't think she got it in her mouth. So, but I just, that's just a warning to the people that when you do go out, check your rooms, make safe. It, it, you're responsible for your kids. With that, I need a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion to adjourn and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. We're adjourned. Thank you.